Hi everybody, Sal from Comic Pop here, and while Comic-Con may be over, the effects are still being felt a week after. Now you may remember I did a DC Warner Brothers reaction video about the trailers that dropped, the biggest announcements from DC Warner Brothers, and I felt it wouldn't be fair if I didn't do a compendium episode where we talked about Marvel Studios announcements. And while they did have a bunch of them, they weren't nearly as bombshelly, so I thought I'd do kind of a round robin, let's talk about them, each bullet point kind of episode. So, here we go. First up, not only will Kurt Russell be in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but he will also be playing Star-Lord's dad, and that Star-Lord's dad will be revealed to be Ego the Living Planet? My first theory about that, by the way, was that it was going to be a Wizard of Oz kind of reveal where people thought there was an actual planet out there that was alive, but in fact it was like a ship that projected the pilot onto it and made it seem like it was alive so people would leave it alone, but in fact it was actually just like a place where Star-Lord's dad lived. But I don't know what they're going to do. I'm kind of excited for it, though. The fact is, if you announced 20 years ago that they were going to do a movie in which they depicted Ego the Living Planet, it would have been kind of cool, but kind of also like, what? Nowadays, it's kind of like, okay, I, I can't wait to see what they do with it, especially in the Guardians of the Galaxy universe. Another announcement was that Brie Larson will be officially playing Captain Marvel. We already knew this, but thanks for coming out. I'm excited for that movie and I can't wait to see it. And speaking of that movie, they also revealed that logo along with several other logos that went along with the movies that are coming out. Thor Ragnarok looks like it should have a soundtrack made by Daft Punk from Tron Legacy and LaRue, who does 80s synth pop kind of music. I kind of hope it is, because that is the most 80s title I've probably seen since Stranger Things. Doctor Strange got a new trailer, and it was even more generic than the last one. So that's kind of scary. Hopefully it's because they're worried that they won't get the mainstream audiences with a kind of character like Doctor Strange in the world that he presents. But I'm really hopeful that it's not an indicator that the movie is going to be kind of by the numbers and kind of cliche. It felt like a Marvel trailer, but Doctor Strange is not your typical Marvel movie, or at least it shouldn't be. In the world of Spider-Man Homecoming, they released an amazing looking promo picture that featured both Spider-Man and the Vulture. Again, this is in a world where I would have normally been like the Vulture, but now I'm like, oh, I'm down now, especially given the promo piece. You know, it's, it's indicative of the usual kind of promo pieces we get. It's typical, it's cool, it's great, it's bright, it's fun. I can't wait to see the Vulture in action. It looks complicated and heavy, so that'll be kind of neat. But otherwise, there were some other casting announcements about Spider-Man Homecoming, and it's just indicating that the movie will in fact feel like a John Hughes movie. Uh, I understand there was some footage released, but they didn't share that footage with anybody besides those in the audience that were attending the show, but we know what the footage was, and it sounds really fun. I'm interested to see how a teenage high school Spider-Man is going to be portrayed that is outside of, like, a graduation setting. Moving into the realm of TV, uh, Ghost Rider is going to be on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which we kind of already knew, but they gave a little promo video teaser that they released immediately following. It involves uh, Ghost Rider's head, and it looks like... Johnny Blaze slash Danny Ketch, but we know it's actually Roberto Reyes, Ghost Rider, so I don't know. The fact is, it's kind of weird to see Ghost Rider joining the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. universe when he should really be joining the Netflix teams, but that said, I'm down for Ghost Rider in any form now that he's back at Marvel. As far as Netflix is concerned, the Luke Cage trailer dropped. It looks fantastic. I love that portrayal of Luke Cage. I can't wait to see a whole show dedicated to him, and only in a couple of months will we see the whole damn show. Can't wait. The Defenders got their own little teaser trailer, which I thought was really kind of cool. While there's no footage, we did get a voiceover, and we got a really cool rendition of Come As You Are, and some logos and art. It looked really cool. The only thing that was missing, I think, were some bullets. You know, because I really, really want Frank to drop in on this party, and I don't think they're going to be able to get away with doing it without him. So, I'm sure he will appear, but that said, you get in those four characters, that should be enough. Marvel Studios got a new logo, which looks really nice, and I'm sure it differentiates itself from the other Marvel Studio properties that are not under the Disney umbrella. That said, it looks good. There you have it, everybody. My opinions about the Marvel Studios showings at Comic-Con from last weekend. Uh, a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you've never seen this channel before, welcome to Comic Pop. I'm Sal. We do five different shows a week here. Uh, that's right, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Brand new shows every day of the week. You can catch them here. Uh, I advise you to subscribe to the channel and find out more for yourself. And if you like this video, give us a like. We really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.